All rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Court, please call the vote. <coughs> Councilman Alvarez. Here. Councilman Cullen. Here. Councilwoman Eckhart. Here. Councilwoman Hudax. Absent. Supervisor Hay. Here. Electronic devices, if you have any, please put them on vibrate. Exit in the front and the rear. Uh, first item on, well, we have to come out of the executive session. Make a motion to come out of the executive session. No oh. action was taken. I'll Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, presentation. First up will be Putnam County Cell Tower, the Kern Building. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you, Supervisor. How are you? Fine, thank you. Bruce, I know you just introduced yourself to the audience. Sorry. Yeah, my name is Bruce Walker. I'm the Deputy County Executive for Putnam County. Thank you. Uh, I come tonight before you just to uh, bring up to speed on uh, the cell tower uh, that we're placing over at the current building. Uh, and just at a very high level, over the last few years, the uh, number of, of uh, organizations within the county uh, were working on, uh, through a radio committee that was chaired by uh, Tom Lannan, who's here tonight as well. Uh, they had members of the local government as well as some of the emergency services personnel throughout the county. They developed through this radio committee a strategy based on evaluations of uh, where there were dead spots through the county uh, for our emergency services personnel as well as for the constituents that used the 911 services. Uh, and then based on that evaluation, the strategy basically incorporated uh, mechanisms and opportunities to uh, basically fill those gaps. Uh, through the addition of uh, additional radio frequencies. Uh, and that predicated the need for us to take a look at the microwave system, uh, which is the backbone of the communication system within the county. It goes throughout the entire county. Uh, that being said, we put that comprehensive plan together, uh, basically a Homeland Security interoperability plan to enable communication for both the public to be able to call in through 911 as well as our emergency service responders to be able to uh, utilize the, uh, the radio frequencies as well. Uh, that being said, we applied for a grant a couple of years ago. First, we actually applied about, I guess, three years ago. Didn't get that grant. Uh, we subsequently applied again to Homeland Security. We did get the grant at that time. And last year, we began in earnest to build out that plan, working through various uh, committee meetings at the legislature and uh, you know, getting any feedback we could from anybody who attended those. So we, one of the locations which impacts uh, the town of Southeast is the, the, the Kern Building, which is a county-owned property where we have our Department of Motor Vehicles as well as our T Department of Health, uh, and Cornell, Cornell Cooperative Extension is actually housed at that location as well. Uh, we, we, we basically chose that site for a number of reasons. Uh, the ownership in the property affords us uh, tremendous capability uh, of control over it, particularly on a physical security perspective, as well as some of the monitoring capabilities because we own the property that it's uh, a part of. Uh, the site is also an area that we do regular patrols uh, with our sheriff's department, which uh, just facilitates us having an additional layer of protection. And our existing fiber network uh, is also housed there, so it enables us to tie our microwave system into the fiber optic system within the county. Um, and given the commercial corridor and the existence of existing towers there, as well as the high voltage transmission lines, seemed like a perfect location. Uh, and so we continued down the path, working in a private public partnership with Homeland Towers. Uh, and we reached, uh, just yesterday signed the contract to continue to move forward. And now we're uh, working, putting together site plans with our Department of Health as well as our Highway Department. Okay. All right. Um, some of the major concerns, Bruce, is like we're like the last one to know. I know you did try to come back here, I guess, oh, back in September, October. Right. And didn't get here, which, but by then we pretty much heard it from numerous sources, newspaper and everything. And if there's a better way in the future, like communications, I know we're hearing and reading a lot in the paper about um, a sewer system coming in possibly from Connecticut. The town is unaware. We have legislators that you know, <coughs> may or may not be aware. Um, there's a concern by the public. 
What I'm, the concerns I've heard about the location, this one is one is the 180 foot height. I mean, that's yep. really unusual. It's actually not. Um, it's pretty well, for standard. For this town, it is. So. But, well, I don't know whether it is or isn't in the, in the town, but the reason it's 180 feet is because the microwave technology is, is unlike radio frequency. So it's a point to point communication, meaning you have to have line of sight between one microwave dish and the other microwave dish. So getting up above everything is why you go 180 feet, because it enables us to be able to tie into the other microwave dishes that we need to, to make the backbone of the fiber network, or the uh, microwave network. Now, I was on the legislature for 19 years, and there was many times that they came in front of us with the bed spot, but it was never mentioned to be here in this town southeast, but over in Phillipstown. Actually, there's numerous dead spots throughout the entire county. So now, when you say a dead spot, is it like a small radius of an area or a very large radius of area? Because Phillipstown was always number one. It varies throughout the county. Uh, Cold Spring is probably the worst. I mean, we've gone through and we have maps of all the different locations in the county. It was put together by the radio committee over the last several years. Uh, and, you know, part of the process is identifying those and trying to fill the gaps. It won't be 100% when we're done, but it'll be significantly better than what we have today. Okay, so basically the worst area in the county is not the town of Southeast, but elsewhere. Is there one plan for there? That's part of, a, part of the project, yep. Was it, has it been selected? Because I understand there's only two selected sites thus far? There's four that have been identified that we approached the legislature with. Uh, and just, you know, with regard to not knowing about it, there were, I don't even know how many public meetings that we had at the legislature level uh, through physical services regarding it, which are publicly noticed meetings with the information that the cell towers would be improved for secret and all the things associated with that. So well, again, that's how we learned about it. But you know, the communication is usually between governments or is a little bit better. So all I'm asking in the future, like another rumor we've heard recently now is out by Pugsley Road, the 10 acres that was supposed to go to the Humane Society is now become a, a, a range for the county possibly? We, we just issued a RFI for a gun range, that's correct. Okay, and we, I only heard about that maybe a week ago. It's, so an R it, it's an RFI, it's not an RFP. Well, it's a request for information. Okay, but there's something that's being so, planned. So until, well, until we have the information, it's premature to come tell you I'm putting a gun range there if we don't know that we're doing it. We don't have legislative approval. We haven't an issued an RFP. We're trying to get the information as to the viability of a gun range in that site. Okay. Now, I just understand there's, you know, the if I had, on. Unfortunately, if I had to come here and tell you about every idea we had, no, no, you not. and I would just have to spend the day in the, uh, in the chambers. And, well. but, but, I, but I understand that. And listen. We, can, we so, can do that, and I'll come talk to you about the, the sewage treatment plant that we're talking about, <laughs> which, again, is not in Southeast. We're using or attempting to use if it's viable. There's some federal issues that we're trying to work through. And, again, once the viability has been proven that we can do it, until then, it's just premature to have the discussion. Okay. The only thing is we hear more outside, and when they ask us as a board or whatever, we, we really don't have any idea. Sure. No, that's, I mean, we can improve the communication. Okay. That's fine. On, anyone else here? I have a lot of questions. Well, you can't go. Okay. Edwin, you have anything? No. Uh, no, just um, being a former police officer, I know how important radio communications is. And uh, the town I worked in, we had a lot of dead spots, especially in apartment buildings. And uh, it's imperative in this day and age that law enforcement and fire departments have um, the best radio communications possible. So I, you know, we don't have a vote in the matter, but I, I don't have a problem with it. Um, having the antenna um, there, and especially you're going to rent out some space to cell phone antenna uh, providers, to I understand. Well, we won't rent it out, but Homeland Towers oh, will. They will, right. okay. So, there will be re revenue generated. Yes. For yep. The, the, the way the contract's set up is it's two thousand dollars rent, or thirty percent of the revenue, whichever is greater. Okay. And that so, money is utilized to help offset the cost of the other towers that we do rent on. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe a little premature, but our highway department has a two-way radio system. I'm wondering if there's any way they could get their antenna on. Well, that's, that you know, that, that's the bigger plan with right. once you get the radio frequencies up and running, okay. standardizing across, you know, all of the departments that utilize the radio frequencies. Okay. That's okay, it. Lynn. Um, okay. Leave the best to last. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Um, if line of sight is necessary for these towers, and it is, as I understand it, and that's for the microwave? For the microwave component. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Southeast is by far the tallest at 180 feet. We allow about, we, the most we have in town is 130 and they got a variance for that, it's usually 125. 
but if line of sight is necessary, and MAPAC and Putnam Valley are on hold right now, correct? They're going to be going to the legislature in March, yep. Okay. But how, why, do, why are you going ahead with this when there, and there is nothing planned for Phillipstown, right? No, there is. Where in Phillipstown? Because I have, heard not we, we haven't cited the location in Phillipstown because we're trying to build the microwave. The microwave backbone is the, the base component to get all the other things done. If you don't have a microwave backbone, then we're not going to be able to transport the information that needs to then drop down and be promulgated via radio frequency. Well, the, then the, would that mean you wouldn't, um, would it be necessary then in Southeast if it can't go, if it can't be countywide? That's, I'm a little confused. I, I don't understand the question. Well, if you're not, if you don't have a site yet in Phillipstown. Right. And you have one in, you're, the only two that are approved so far, as far mm -hmm. as I know, and both are ones on the southeast border at the emergency services building, and one is at the current building. That's correct. What good will those two do unless the other ones go in? They do quite a bit, actually. So it's not, the microwave system is a system. Mm -hmm. It's an integration of a number of towers that work together to be able to provide the, the capability for communication in multiple paths. So the addition of these two, at two towers provide us additional capability for that communication. It's, it's not independent of Phillipstown, but it provides benefit even if Phillipstown's tower is not it, which is why we can stage the towers the way we are, where these two are going in, <clears throat> and then we'll be working through the other two, the one at the airport property in Bay Pack, as well as the Putnam Valley Senior Center. Okay, and why were they, I, I'm not, I was not clear because I did speak about the, uh, I went to several meetings about this, and I wasn't clear why Putnam Valley and the golf course actually, why they were put in abeyance, and we questioned um, Southeast, but, but we went, you went ahead with Southeast and you went ahead with Carmel. Why, can you explain that? Sure. The, uh, the airport property, when, so we met with the town of Carmel, um, based on their, you know, some of the input that they had gotten from the legislative meetings, we went there and the challenge we had there was properly siting it on the property. So we have a 200 plus acre piece of property in the golf course uh, and we wanted to be able to site it in the best location for the residents as well as for the capability for us to be able to use it as a microwave uh, you know, tower. And so there was some discussion and we went back to our legislature who has to approve these as to where it was sitting on the property. So effectively, what we've done is moved it about 150 feet, or 300, I think it's 300 feet. What, what ended up moving, 300? A little less than 300. A little less than 300 feet away from where it was, but it's still going on the airport property. Okay, and the neighbors there are fine with that so far? We had, we had one person that you know had come to the meeting and uh, voiced concern, but from where they are, they're actually, it's, it's almost equidistant from all of the residences that are uh, around the golf course. Okay, because there, there were quite a few at the meeting I attended. Um, and um, so, and what about at the Putnam Valley Senior Center? Our intent is still today to put it at the Senior Center. We had so been asked by, by Supervisor Oliverio <laughs> right. to take a look at Piano Mountain um, and another piece of property, with Granite, Granite Mountain. Uh, we did take a look at those. We did the evaluations on whether or not they were viable. Uh, there were lots of challenges with both of those other pieces of property, so we're back to Putnam Valley. Okay. Um, and is security in general, is that a problem? That's why these are good, uh, you mentioned that and I never heard that before. It's a very significant problem. Okay, so, so uh, other towers are also in jeopardy? We're building a security system for all of our towers. Okay, all right. Um, and you haven't identified a spot in Phillipstown? I just want to be clear on that. We've, act, we've been looking at actually two or three different sites over there. Uh, they're on private property, so we have to be able to negotiate with the people who have it. We don't have any property over there that we can utilize effectively that you know works, that isn't, and as you well know, most of the, that area is down low. So you have to get property that is viable enough to be able to tie into the, to the microwave piece. And what about Kent, same thing? Or no, we, we don't need to do that. We're actually going to be tying into the tower, which actually I think is, so it, it's actually right on the border of Patterson, but that's 260 feet, that tower. Okay. Is that the one at Mountain? It's on 292. Okay. 
Okay. Is so, Mount Ninnam uh, any part of this? Yes. Okay. Oh, so Mount Ninnam is going to have a, or already has one? They have it already one. has yeah. one now. Okay. Um, all right. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be really important if, um, since we're not sharing revenue, um, if we could get uh, some help for our highway department and other things, I think it's, it would be a nice accommodation to make because um, this will be able to be seen by, by um, I think, folks in Tanet, Lake Tanetta and places like that. So um, I also would say that I think it, it is really important. I, I really don't think you'd be locked in a closet with Tony for the day if, if, if the... <laughs> don't bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, but... Um, I just think even when you're starting to plan things, if it's more, I mean, I watched a meeting with uh, the county executive and Mayor Bowden, and I think you were there too, that was on the Danbury website, so I kept up with it that way. But I would say it's really important to engage the town where you get to put in what you want without any say-so from our, your elected, you know, the elected officials. Um, so I, I would take issue with that. I think it's really important that when things are progressing that and I think you could learn a lot too. I mean, we'd learn from you what's going in, and you'd learn from us sure. how viable it is, and if people really want it or need it. And I think the communication has not been good, and it might be on our side as well. But um, I would really strongly suggest this. I know I called the county executive about it. And we had a, a pretty productive conversation, but I didn't extract any <coughs> promises. And I think this town board would be like like to be a lot more involved. Our constituents ask us, and uh, I think. They should be, and I think it's really important for them. So, thank you. Anyone from the public? Any questions? Okay, Bruce and your team. Great. Thank you thank very you. much. Good to see thank some you. of Good you. Night. Thank you. For right. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, Jill Riccio, President, Putnam County Economic Development Corporation. <clears throat> Again, thank you for coming this evening, gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening, and uh, thank you for including me in tonight's agenda. As you know, I'm Jill Verricchio, president of the EDC. <clears throat> this organization is a private, public 501c6, and it celebrated its 20th anniversary in 2016. And on behalf of my board and myself, I'm here to extend a thank you. In economic development terms, especially in this glorious Hudson Valley, you hear about the assets. We all have these assets in the valley, the four R's. <clears throat> and in Putnam, we can go a little bit beyond the four traditional R's, the roads, the rail, the river, nearby runways with our reservoirs, rail trails, and remarkable business and government leaders committed to what I call thoughtful economic development. I'm here to applaud you. You do the work. You make it happen on behalf of your constituents and Putnam County. Uh, as a reminder, the EDC was formed in 1994 <coughs> as a joint venture with the Cornell Cooperative, the Putnam Planning Department, and the county legislative body. They completed an extensive survey about the businesses here, specifically about business retention, expansion, and within two years, this organization was formed. So what's the mission? It's remaining the same. We're the primary facilitator connecting local resources with opportunities to deliver economic growth. We work to cultivate and expand existing businesses as well as promote commercial real estate to attract new business. We market the assets, proximity, they say location, 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 proximity, our transit links, infrastructure, and a highly skilled workforce. We advocate for development projects among the municipalities and planning boards to ensure the growth of our county's tax base. We educate and assist local nonprofits, small businesses, and municipalities with incentives and grant programs from New York State, the various utilities, and other funding sources. And we strive for a balanced growth throughout the county to meet the needs of a very broad audience. And tonight I'm here to celebrate, as we say, moving collectively into the 21st century to thank you all for your involvement and dedication to bring economic vitality to Putnam. And as a reminder, and I do have um, a couple of gifts for you, but I also have a report, and I might have given this to you, Tony, when we first met, but this was developed in 2014, and it's pretty accurate. It comes from the um, combination of the financial planning department and the uh, real, real property office. Um, and it's established the fact that <clears throat> the commercial sector contributes more to a municipality's budget revenue than it uses in municipal services. The study makes the argument indisputably. The well-being of our schools, our municipal services, and the quality of life for our residents are directly tied to the commercial sector that pays taxes here. The total numbers represent the property taxes paid on each parcel of land owned by a resident or commercial entity. 
I'm going to leave this with you. I have the PDF if you would like me to send it to you. But it, and I tagged the actual <coughs> page so you can share uh, <coughs> with regards to the, uh, the fact about um, how much is contributed through <coughs> commercial taxpayers of the town of Southeast represent 6% of all the parcels and they pay 30% of the total taxes. So tonight, in addition to the presentation, I have <coughs> some gifts. I have, you can hang this on some wall somewhere, hopefully, one for each of you. I have <coughs> a mint tea paper. Dad has a couple of comments. You know we can't accept gifts. Oh, well, it's less than seventy-five dollars. No, no. It's got a, it's got a uh, antenna for cell mm -hmm. cell tower. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good idea. It, no, it has a level, so we're on the level, and we can also have. If you want to write yourself a note, a little bit of thing that comes out, and you can write on it. Got one for everybody, and I have a little cow pin, which I hope somebody gets to wear and feel quietly affiliated with the Putnam County. We knew you were going to bring all these gifts. We'd had you earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're food, right? But here you go. With you. Okay. Thanks, Jill. <coughs> Thank you. We're you can have too much money on. in your budget with all these things. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> Use my budget this year, huh? <laughs> How'd you afford this then? Take off the list. The missing person. Yeah. Anyway. Any questions? Any feedback to us? Any? Yes, I do. Oh, good. Of course. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> when you, you, you're talking about the benefits and, and tax benefits, but um, I will say, as I always say, we do not share sales tax. I so, know, from you and Okay, and so what happens is when you talk about the benefits, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the benefits go to the county, and our, actually our taxes are lower than our county taxes, and it's one of the few towns that is in Putnam. So, um, we do get the traffic, we do have uh, the, get to do the road repair, et cetera. So, I don't think the picture is quite as rosy. For us, um, because our constituents have to sit in more traffic and yeah. um, we have to pay for road repair. Yeah, so. no, I hear you. Um, and you know, this isn't uncommon. And being new, I've been here about 15 months, um, it's a common issue uh, between the two municipalities. And I've been pressing to get the information from, uh, now there's a report I requested just to understand, because I was you know, told where the money gets sort of, we pay for and we make whole, there's none of these. Uh, properties that are going to be left for the municipality to pay if somebody's in foreclosure. So there's a, there's a rationale that I understand, but I can certainly appreciate um, your scenario. Uh, we I'm from I live personally. I don't, if anybody cares, I live in Orange County, and we have um, we I follow that story because in Orange County they have the Woodbury Common, right? You know, uh, entity, and that's a quite robust experience. But um, I think in Southeast we we'd be um, some of us would be a little more open to development. Um, commercial development if uh, if the county was willing to share sales tax and I understand I think they were up nine percent mm. I just read um, this year but of the fuel yeah um, but it's it is problematic it's not all rosy when you're managing the town when we're running the town right no no I, I, I'm trying to be a realist you know but trying to bring some goodwill and some gesture that we are vigorous in looking at how to bring opportunities to the community I do get outside site selector, selectors looking for parcels. Look, I'm not a broker, a real estate agent, but I do push the information and try to bring opportunities. And I don't know, I send it to you, Tony, on occasion. Um, so that information is getting out there. We also have um, a meeting that you know we try to talk about issues, and I know <coughs> Mr. Cullen is aware of it. Um, and that was one of the, one of the meeting uh, topics that we discussed last time. And so. does the EDC, um, are you, um, how, are you plugged into this proposed sewer line from Danbury, or do you have nothing at all to do with that? Correct, the ladder. Okay. okay. Is yeah. it none? What? It, well, I didn't hear what you said. The ladder. She said, "Am I plugged into it?" And no. It's no. no. It's okay. coming from right Danbury and the county executive's office. I just office. thought maybe you'd shed more light, but you can't. So. That's okay. Oh well, I guess. Mary you, same with the shoot, you, you can't tell us about the shooting range either, then. So. Sorry, okay. no. All right. <laughs> I'll just have to be happy with my tape measure. Thank you. All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm. Have okay. a good night. Thank you for coming. Yep. You got tape measures too? Oh. Mm. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Next up will be a public hearing for the expansion of Blackberry Sewer District. <coughs> before, Michael, before you come up, let me just explain to the public briefly what some of this is about. Okay. Not yet. Can they see my password? No. No, what do I do with that? 
Okay. I make a motion to open the public hearing. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> For those of you in the audience, I, hopefully all you know where Blackberry Hill is. It's in the town of Southeast. I call it North Brewster Road. There's probably other names for it, but right here, let's see where, no, that's the wrong one. <clears throat> I know. That's the one. This here is the road, the, the um, VFW is down here. You go under the bridge there and you start to go up the hill and this road goes into the plant. Right there is the plant. That's the Black Bear Hill sewer plant. The house that's requesting this is located right there. So what has to happen is a line will have to be put in from here, going along the roadway, to this house, exactly where it's going from their property. We don't know that. I don't know if they know two that. Houses. Two houses. It's two houses. There's one line, two houses. Okay. I'll, tell, I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> okay. So that, that line is going to go from there to there. And just so you know, if you have a better feel for the area, this is the house in particular. So next time you're coming up from under the bridge on the right-hand side, that's the house that's making this application. The application's requesting, again, to be connected to the sewer district. The improvements proposed are insta installation of piping, mains, pumping, and lift station to connect the premises with the sewer treatment plant and infrastructure currently serving the Blackberry Sewer District. The proposed to be expected for the improvement is $40,000. That will not be borne by anyone other than the person making this application. The residents of Blackberry Hill will not share in one penny of that. That's up to the applicant to make that uh, contribution. Uh, solely borne, again, by the applicant, petitioner in this case, and no part which shall be borne by the people of the district itself. The estimated cost the petitioner to hook up or connect the existing Blackberry sewer and associated improvements is $1,900. There's two homes on that site, or two structures, so it'll be $1,900 per structure. So you're looking at $40,000 for the mains, and then when they connect, they will be paying $1,900. The estimated cost of the said district to a typical property owner in Blackberry Hill is $1,064 per year. So they're paying a little bit more. They've come in long after the game, and that was what we determined to be an, uh, a fair price for them to make the connection. Some people are going to say, do we have the capacity there to provide them with that service? And the answer is yes. The New York, <coughs> State, the New York City DEP Speedy's permit is for 74,700 gallons per day, and Blackberry Hill on average uses around 58,956 gallons per day. So you're looking at 75,000 gallons per day, rounded, and rounded 59,000. So there's ample capacity for this connection. And with that, I'll let you now come up to speak. I just want to give the public an idea where it was and quick overview. I really don't have too much to add, but I'll answer any questions if the board members have any. Well, it's a public it's hearing. Public if they, yep. they have any. Okay. Anyone from the public here to speak to this this evening? We did get at least one email. Uh, we responded to that person, and we basically provided them with the letter that you provided to town with all the particulars, and uh, he wrote back thanking us for information. He did make a comment that our, uh, the legal ease that we use, and I think his confusion was the same as mine when I first, before I got into politics, you say whereas and resolve. Yeah. Why don't you just come out and ask the question instead of going through all that? So, you know, we follow a form petition, and, um, it could be in plain, ish, you know, in plain English, but, but uh, it's not intended to be confusing in any way. Unfortunately, it is if, sometimes, but uh, I think you have the gist. Uh, the, the only comment I have is to the two houses is that um, the reason why we're asking for both to be connected is the original house does have a, a pre-existing non-conforming septic system that was installed at the time of the construction of the original house, which is the one on the left. That's a uh, approximately 800 square foot house. We figured, um, given the age of that septic system, it would be appropriate to uh, not just the age, but also if you see where the wooden fence is, that's where we believe the location is. Just on the other side of that fence, it's it's in close proximity to uh, 
uh, a wet area on the property, which is uh, an area that, that is um, mostly consists of runoff from the highway, but does connect to the wetland across the street. Do you have any idea, have you done any engineering? Do you have an idea how that pipe is gonna actually get to that property? If yes. I put that picture up there? Uh, you... So we, we, we've asked Bibbo Associates to analyze the, the construction between the house and the nearest. Um, <coughs> uh, could you, would you mind, could you go, yeah, can okay, you go there I and show us if you don't water mind? Water Unless you wanna use this thing. Uh, no, that's easy just to show you. So there's a, uh, there's a manhole that is approximately. Okay, here. go to your right a little more so Pete may. Sure. Okay. We have a little. Okay. Oh, All right. So the, the, the proposal is to um, construct a, a small pump that's located here. Okay. Whereas the, the, the uh, small house and the second house would be gravity fed down to the pump. The pump would pump up to here, and then across to here is about uh, 300 feet. There's a manhole that exists right at the entrance of the driveway. Uh, that's where we would connect to. There is a, a sewer line that, that's there in that manhole, and that's where the two pipes would connect and then connect to the plant. Now, that one that's located there, is that what feeds Paddock Lane? You know, I, I couldn't tell you offhand. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but our engineer had indicated that that was the appropriate connection point. And, and so the board is aware what we did was when, when Mr. Parkman made the application, or uh, when we applied to the health department to legitimatize the second septic system on the property, Warren bought in 2000, there's, there, were, there were two houses uh, on the property uh, at the time. There was two houses, or was there a house and a garage? That, well, there was a house and a garage, but it was constructed as, as a house. Warren bought it, 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 it had a kitchen, So this house had a septic system in the ground behind the house that was constructed but not constructed with the health department approval. So um, it was say it again, Mr. Oh, okay. The, so the health there's, department is the original house that has an original septic system. Right. That that's considered a non conforming septic system. It was installed before there were any health department regulations. Really? Because that, that original house was built in the twenties. Wow. Okay. So the second house was built in the nineties. It was a garage with a, with, built as a garage with an apartment above, but not legally constructed as, a, as an apartment. That house had a septic system that was installed behind it. In 2010, Warren was issued a violation from the town to indicate that he had an illegal apartment. We started to work on, on the process. We applied to the planning board for uh, an approval for an accessory apartment. You know what, come back over here so maybe they can pick up you better, possibly. Now, one other question. Right here, where it's going to go from here up to <coughs> there, does, does Mr. Parkner own that property? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, the, uh, the, the first septic, septic system that's associated with the original house is, is a, a, a pre-existing non-conforming septic system. The second one that was built in connection with the garage was, is, is illegal. It, there was no health department approval that was issued for it. In, in 2010, th there was a violation that was issued. We made application to the planning board for an accessory apartment to deal with that second structure. Uh, Warren made application to the health department at that time. They had advised us to essentially hang tight. They had an issue with Mr. Sant, who was across the street, across North Brewster Road. Uh, be honest with you, it got away from us. We, we uh, um, held off and really didn't do anything until 2015. The building inspector had uh, notified us again. We had an issue, issued an appearance ticket. We applied to the zoning board to obtain variances to legitimatize the second structure. Those variances were issued. And in 2010, when we were in the process with the planning board, we went and did some testing on the property to see that it was uh, consistent to handle the two septic systems at the time it was. In 2015, we went back and did the same thing, and unfortunately, we didn't get the same results in 2015. We don't know why. We don't know what changed around us. It doesn't seem like anything has changed around us, but the area that was, was ex suitable for, sept for the septic, the second septic system had then failed. So what, what we proposed was um, 
should we try to connect to um, BlackBerry? <coughs> Our engineers had suggested to us that that would be the, the most logical uh, situation because in order to obtain or develop a conforming septic system, what we would need to do is bring in a certain amount of fill <coughs> and have an elevated system on the property. When we looked at what an elevated system would look like, <coughs> there would be an area around the, um, the, the larger house, which is actually the garage, that would be approximately three feet high and a certain uh, dimension. It would look unsightly. It would not conform to anything in the neighborhood. And at that point, we figured with the cost of that system, uh, the design, the development, the purchase of the fill, that was going to be around $40,000 to do that. We figured, you know what, if it's going to cost about the same to construct to the, the line to the BlackBerry plant, it would be much better to apply to the board to connect to the BlackBerry plant. So we reached out to uh, Levon as the special district administrator to see if the plant had capacity. He had advised us that the plant had sufficient capacity. We had crafted a letter to the town board. This was uh, April, May of last year. Uh, Tony had responded to us to indicate that um, conceptually uh, it, it may work. However, the board would be reluctant to have an island, you know, a separate parcel that was not contiguous to the plant be connected. So uh, what we did was between April and December was uh, attempt to convince our neighbor, who is the property that is between the Pauchner property. Um, Tony, if you can... Uh, Where you, is that house? That house. That right one? There. Yeah, right there. Okay. We had uh, made Cross attempts Scott to place. try to convince that neighbor to join us in the petition to, in a petition <coughs> to the town board to connect, to facilitate uh, contiguity. Uh, they have a, a working septic system. They didn't feel the need to incur any additional costs, so they respectfully declined. We had looked at the boundaries of the Blackberry Sewer District with uh, Levon. Uh, I was able to get a copy of the map, and when I looked at the map, it didn't seem like it was going to take too much arm bending to get the system, the configuration to cover our piece. So we, we took that, and that was the basis for our submittal to the town board to request that it include the Pauchner property for purposes of, of septic. And our thought was for the, connecting, the connection of the two houses to the, to the plant, it didn't seem to make a lot of sense to leave the pre-existing non-conforming system in the ground. We figured, you know what, if we have the, the two properties, let's connect both. That the original system was put in the 20s. We don't have a lot of information uh, on hand about it. We know that it's close to, to the wetland, could you know drain into the wetland, you know, under the ground. We figured let's get both on the plant. If you had the capacity, it seemed to make a lot of sense. So that was the basis of our, our request to the town board. Are you at okay, anyone from any of the questions here? Anyone again from the public? <clears throat> would you come up to the mic if you would, please? My only question is, I'm Rick, just Rick curious. Uh, yes, Richard O'Rourke. I'm a resident of the town of Southeast. We see all the time, but the And I'm not in favor or opposed. I just have a, a question. Are you going to be an out-of-district contract, or are you going to amend the special district? We are asking to amend the boundaries of the district to include the Faulkner property. Okay, and that is to include the, the, the parcel that's actually in between? No. No. Oh, no, it's, it's so you're actually going to so You're going to go around it? Well, they're going to go in front of the, along the, the uh, right away of the town in the in the road, which they're going to repair and et cetera. Okay. But so they're, you're, they're you're going to skip to over. That. That's right. Got it. Okay. Just curious. And on that question, uh, the way I'm thinking, if at some point in time that person septic fails, has to go into it, I think there should be some kind of compensation to Mr. Parkner because if he put the line in there's going to have to be, I would think I don't know if that's legal or not but the fairness of it is if he said no and after it goes this oh I want to get in he's going to have to contribute do you know I sir uh, we uh, we didn't feel like we were in a position to dictate any terms that no, would be a fantastic thing but but um, certainly they w if they did have to connect they would get the benefit of the line that was installed by Mr. Parkner 
Uh, but we, we, we thank you. We, we didn't want to dictate any terms. Well, we're, we're, not gonna we're happy either. even to just have you even hear our application. So You want to put that on the record now? You're not going to look for a future contribution? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I should never ask a lawyer a question. Hey, Sorry, I, you know, I don't want to give away Warren's rights. I just want to make sure that we achieve a certain goal. So. Okay. Levon? This is Levon Bedrosian, Special District Coordinator. Um, my only comment is, is I'd like to sit down with the engineers at one time sure. to talk about the, the pathway you use. I think that manhole cover that you're talking about actually is an outfall, not, not it a doesn't it doesn't go into the headwork. So gotcha. we have to talk about that. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and just so the board knows, we, we um, um, based on the letter from April, uh, my advice to Warren was let's get the petition pending in front of the board. We know that in, in connection with the extension of a district, the, the legal requirements are that you have a map plan and report prepared by an engineer. What we have submitted to the board is not a map plan and report as prepared by an engineer. So what, what we wanted to do was to get some indication before Warren spent the money on, on, the, on <coughs> an engineer to develop the actual plan. The plan would include a survey of the Pockner piece and Scott Place and would also include uh, construction plans that were prepared by, by our engineer who is Bibbo Associates uh, that, that are legitimate construction plans that your town engineer would, would, would review together with, with Levon. Uh, they would specify precisely where the pipes would be laid, the type of pipe, the size, uh, any disturbance in connection therewith. So for instance, if we trigger speedies or any other permits or approvals in connection therewith uh, to connect and so really what we wanted to do is to get really to see the, the reaction of the board before we knew that we would commit to spend the soft costs that are involved. So that you should be in receipt of a more developed plan uh, that is more precise. What we have showed to you is, is what would happen, um, but not with the level of detail that Levon or Tom Fenton would be, you know, would, is used to seeing. Now, were you watching faces as you were making the uh, application tonight? Yeah, I read the tea leaves. That's what I do. <laughs> I, the biggest thing is that the total cost of this is going to be borne by the applicant. By the applicant. Yes, yeah. And there's plenty of capacity. It was minimal. And, you know, I mean, that's my only thought yeah. on it. And uh, I think from. We can't, we can't take a straw poll, but I mean. At no, no, point, I'm not asking you to. I think from an equitable perspective, you know, from the residents of Blackberry, if there's capacity, if we pay the equivalent uh, capital fee so that we're on par with every single other uh, uh, resident of Blackberry and everything else is borne by us, I, I think it's a. Uh, um, I, I don't think we put anybody out. And, and I think that's the primary goal of the town board is to make sure that whatever happens is fair to everybody. So. Right, and, and we can see if we get any, I mean, obviously there's no comment tonight, but we can see if anyone does write after the, seeing the public hearing. <clears throat> sure. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, as long as there's the capacity, which there is, um, the expense for hooking up is going to be borne by the applicant, so it's not going to be a cost of the district. Um, and it will prevent, hopefully, uh, leaching fields or going into wetlands. Uh, <clears throat> You know, which is good for the environment. So I think it's uh, it's a home run. I don't have a problem with it. But the um, this is just for the sewer district. They will just, not. It's not for the park district. So they still no, no, right. just just the sewer district. And and there's there's a well on the property that serves the two houses. So it would not connect to the water. Um, okay. It's just, just merely the sewer. Does this property have its own pool? Excuse me. Does this property have no. its own pool? Uh, Swimming pool? Um, I I, I thought I, I saw a little one. Is there? It's a temporary Sam's Okay, but it's a, he has his own pool. He, right. It's not part of the district, right. like you're saying. Right. Well, the, because people who live in the Blackberry Park District right, have right, access right. to the Blackberry other, yeah. pool, so we're, 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 unfortunately, you still won't have the ability. Right, okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure you know um, that's all. Yeah, and my only concern, which I'd like to look into, is how this could affect other districts. If it could negatively impact, I don't think it would, but... Um, that's something looking towards the future to make sure that other, you know, how do you decide who gets to go in and that, so that, that's the only due diligence that I feel is something I would want to do. And that's yeah. why you were staring at me the whole time. No, no. <laughs> Reading I... the tea leaves. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, but the, but no matter what, it's always going to be on a case by case basis. Uh, yes. I mean, someone may make an application if they don't have the, even close to the capacity or even right. runs them close yeah, to the line, it ain't going to happen. Look, I, I could not. Uh, you know, put my town board hat on and think of a million different things Don't that, do that. That, that may be concerns. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think if we were not able to 
uh, come up with a boundary that was something that you were comfortable with, then then we would have a significant issue. If you know, if we were a mile away, right, uh, and, and would be an island, I could understand you know significant issues that the town board would have <coughs> uh, if we didn't have that proximity. So, uh, but it, you know where to get me. If yes. something comes up, just let us know, and, okay. and it's going to be a big investment by one. Yes. So yes. we uh, um, we just wanted to make sure that that. Uh, you know, we had some idea of the direction we were going in before Warren committed to spending the resources that we needed to do it. Okay, last Tom, call. Tom, I have some. Do you have more? Lynn, did you um, have more? No, no, that's okay. what I, I'm just, that's what I want to look into. Hi, good evening, Tom LaPerch, uh, Chairman of the Planning Board. Uh, I guess I got a, a couple of different questions here. I'm thrilled that we're having a dialogue about this never-ending issue that we're hopefully gonna bring to conclusion and getting the property legit. My question to Will is that uh, if this is uh, accepted on a residential level, why isn't this allowed for failing septics on Route 22 to connect to sewer plants on a commercial level? Because I'm, 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 I'm thrilled to think there's a dialogue going on and if there's a solution to some of the failing septics on 22, if we're allowing a residential connection, why doesn't that extend to a commercial because entity? Because we don't control the commercial yeah. district. Yeah, but They're I mean, privately I, owned systems. Yeah. yeah, but but the 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 this is a municipal taxing district. But aren't you? I guess I, I apologize. Maybe uh, is this not controlled by the New York City DEP in terms of the, the sewer district, the sewer regulations, in terms of capacity issues? Probably. Yeah. Well, yeah. it does. But there yeah, but my, so my point is that if if you're extending to one, and I'm hoping that whoever, if this works out, and I hope it does, that the sizing of the pipe allows future failing septics to be accepted, okay? Well, to give but, you a little background on, on Blackberry in particular, okay, thank there you. were five septic systems in uh, mm -hmm. Hillcrest, that I think it was called Hillcrest, Sycamore. Sycamore, Sycamore. 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 that failed about mm -hmm. 25 years ago. And uh, by court order, they were allowed to expand the district to include those five uh, houses, which were not in the original Blackberry right. uh, land development. Um, this is really just an, another extension of that. But you're actually discussing apples and oranges. Okay. The, the, the uh, transportation corporations that own <coughs> sewer plants that provide services to say uh, uh, the Acme uh, Shopping Center and Clock Tower Commons, they're privately owned. They're not owned by the municipality. But I, 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 thank you, um, I, was, I maybe misspoke. My question is, it's still under the auspices of the DEP in terms of the the yes, if, if one of the but units, Tom, yeah. if one of the units that you're asking about, say, I'm no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no, no, there's me, a couple of. Um, I, okay, so we're I'm talking sorry, about Route 22. Me. Okay, if a person wants to connect to an existing one, there's a couple on Route 22, as you're aware. We won't mention which ones. Okay, right. one person is currently being considered to be connected. Okay, they went through the process. If someone wants to make an uh, application to join a private district, <coughs> all they got to do is go and ask the person who owns that system. We're not involved with that. And then the DEP gets involved and says, yes, they got the capacity or no, and how much they going to pay. It's totally different, and it can be done tomorrow if they choose to do it. Right. Well, we'll, we'll kind of clue me in. You're right. It's obviously apples and oranges, but it, it, I just saw this as an opportunity as, as saying, wow, if, there's, if it's happening on a residential level, why can't we accommodate a commercial level? But you're right. It's just two different But I think, entities. and also you probably were thinking of, because it came to mind for me, although it is commercial, um, the Value Village system, um, that was being redone, but that was really under the auspices quite a, of DEP, right. remember? So right. that was, you're right about the DEP, but I think it, it would vary by, you know, the, well, we had I to get think an, the DEP required them to upgrade their system because right. of the watershed regulation. Right. In upgrading their system, they had excess capacity, right. which has allowed them to enter into contractual agreements with, with neighboring properties right. to, serve, to serve their uh, their septic needs. Right. That's an entirely private right. arrangement between those property owners and the owners of Value Village. Uh, thank you for the, thank you. I, I, I thought there was some, some excitement here that we might be able to kind <laughs> yeah. of be able to I solve. I you're excited, Tom. I, I, that to solve some issues, <laughs> those, but. Those hopes were just dashed. Okay. <laughs> well, when the Danbury sewer line comes. Yeah. There you go. But listen, I just, uh, just wanted to say, uh, think that if, if this happens, and I'm thrilled to think that there's a dialogue here, that that pipe is sized. Yeah in anticipation of hopefully, not in failures, but in case there is some other opportunities to bring in some septic set in the neighborhood that might be in jeopardy. 
I mean, I think in theory it would be ideal to have every property in, on a sewer system if possible. I mean, that's not possible really in Southeast, but if there's the capacity, that would be ideal. I mean, it's like you want more special districts? Well, no, <laughs> not necessarily. But it's just better for the environment, I believe, you know. But um, We want more county districts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Will. Yeah, I didn't know the difference. Thank you. I'll, I'll just say that Warren would gladly accept money to enlarge that pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else from the public? I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for coming. Thanks so much. Move on. Thank uh, you for staying extra late tonight. We know what we need to do. We'll get it done and Good. Uh, get back to you. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. i uh, make a motion to go into the work session portion of our meeting. <clears throat> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item number one, discussion, amend, definition of recreation. Um, recreation was in our code book, and we've asked to have it upgraded, and here's what the final resolve will be. Now, what we're doing tonight is just discussing this at during the uh, portion of the meeting, we're going to send out the tenth be lead agency and different documents to forward to the various agencies. Recreation uses include golf courses and driving ranges, dance, gymnastics, and martial arts studios, indoor health and exercise facilities, tennis, racquetball, pickleball, and squash courts, indoor and outdoor, swimming pools, spas, and splash pads, indoor and outdoor, ice skating rinks, indoor soccer facilities, indoor rock climbing gym, and similar recreation facilities. In all zoning district, recreation uses shall exclude automotive or go-kart tracks, shooting ranges, amusement parks, and any use of archery equipment, guns, weaponry, or similar equipment that may be used to stimulate combat, including equipment that has the capacity to propel projectiles or emit a light and or laser. In residential zoning districts, recreation uses shall also exclude bowling alleys, billiard parlors, pool halls, and facilities intended primarily for spectator activities, such as, but not limited to, stadia and arenas, and any of the above permitted uses with spectator seating for more than 25 people. And at the bottom, there's what they have, a small scale, a business occupying less than 15,000 square feet, which for compensation offers indoor recreational activities such as dance studios, martial arts studios, arts and craft studios, music, musical or theatrical instruction, children's gyms and play centers, and other places of public or private entertainment. Activity facilities such do not include facilities intended primarily for the spectator activities such as, but not limited to, stadium arenas, automotive or go-kart tracks, bowling alleys, billiard parlors, billiard parlors, pool halls, amusement games, video games, ski ball, or similar or any use of archery equipment, guns, weaponry, or similar equipment that may be used to stimulate combat, including equipment that has the capacity to projectile a projectile or emit a light and or laser. So you have recreation and what they call small scale, and that limit is 15,000 square feet. So the discussion tonight is that, and later on in the meeting, we're gonna forward it to various uh, other agencies, uh, to Claire Lead Agency. So is there any question on that? No, I, I think it's really important to update this. Um, it looks very thorough. Um, I noticed that um, the old, it's interesting, but shooting ranges weren't permitted even in our old, um, I know the county is different, but it should be pointed out that they were in our old definition as well. Um, and they are in the new. So I think this is needed and, uh, and uh, it's a good idea, idea and it's much more comprehensive now, which is great. Any other comment? This is, I'm assuming, response to the proposed. No, um, it was not. No. No. It's something we've been thinking about doing for a while, and yeah. we're clarifying the definition. I mean, this is the first I'm hearing of it, so I'm not. I'm not saying I'm against it or. Well, no. Well, it. well, we had we have those planning board meetings down right. whatever, right. and it was discussed during that time. Right. We had to have a, a, a better definition of recreation. It was too Especially because it's open. changing. Oh, I mean, recreation yeah. does change with, you know, laser And what one and person things. considers to be recreational may be another person non-recreational use. Right. And also there has to be some kind of protection for people. The biggest thing, that, and we've heard it numerous times, is people that, you know, you have a barrier. You have a, an area where you have commercial, and then right next door is the residential. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to tighten up that, that gap. 
Um, there's going to be maybe further things coming forward where the amount of distance between what one goes into the other to create more of a buffer, yeah. especially with a small town like ours, and it's you know kind of wide open. Right. So I, I think it's um, a, a good improvement. And there will be a public hearing and yes. everything on this. So, yep. so we'll are we over voting on tonight? Is no, we're not no, voting. We're not. This, oh. is just, well, this is oh, just okay. Now we're going to vote in a bit to, yeah. to declare a lead agency and forward them to the different agencies. We're going to declare, ask for a public okay. hearing on this matter. So we're not, okay. And we're this not will be on the right, so website. So there'll have to be a public hearing. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we this really want input. I, yeah. I this do. is the I first step. Yeah, I would like public input, I think, on this is really important. Okay. I'm going to go to number two now, amend definition of ma minor subdivision. Again, down at the uh, work sessions with the planning board. Um, things have changed out there, and our town planner and our town engineer has made this request to make this uh, more clear. Uh, there's a lot of smaller, not smaller lots, but the amount of areas that are um, seeker and uh, I guess the bigger thing. Let me read it and tell you exactly. Any subdivision containing not more than four lots fronting on an existing street, not involving any new street or road, or the extension of municipal facilities, not ever adversely affecting the development of remainder of the parcel or adjoining property, not involving more than one acre of disturbance, not require a town of southeast freshwater wetlands permit, except for an activity of minor significance as specified in 78-4H, and not in conflict with any provision or portion of the comprehensive or master plan official map, if such exists. R chapter 138 zoning of this chapter. A proposed subdivision or re-subdivision shall only be classified as a minor subdivision if the sketch plan incorporates all the track from which lots are proposed to be divided. So as you know, we have a four acre zoning, okay? And sometimes it's the one acre ones that, they're not falling through the cacks, but they, they're, they're asked to do more than they really need to do. So they've asked for this to be done. I don't have a problem. And again, we'll be doing that this evening, declare lead agency and put it through public hearing and the necessary steps. All set? Yes, I'm fine. Okay, now, next is the renaming of 102, 106, 107, 108, 109, and 110 Coolidge Drive to Coolidge Way. I'm going to call this up. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Let's see. I'll start with this here. Okay. Back in the 80s, it, used be, it, was, it still is. It's Tenet Lake Park. It's uh, almost just up the road from where that application was earlier today on the left hand side when you go in there's two stone pillars it was always Tenetta Lake Park mm -hmm. and when you got in the road names were whatever they were many many years okay on the right hand side when you go in it's considered Lakeway where am I at? <coughs> let's see where am I, am I right there? okay this here going around this way when you come in you're down over here you come into the uh, not golden arches but two stone pillars mm -hmm. you come up and around this way that's Lakeway. Then from this point here, it turns into Coolidge. No, I don't know what that one is. You know what? I don't know the name Fairview. of that one. Coolidge. Which one is that one? Fairview. Fairview. This is Fairview. But Lakeway comes in, and right about here, it changes to Coolidge Drive, and it goes out toward the pillars again. Okay? Now, when they were renaming these roads, now in, 19, in the 1980s, Tenetta Lake Park, turn these over to the town as town roads. So it came around like this here, and we have a resolution identifying those roads in there. This area right here, okay, going this way. When they were doing 911, that had numerous names over, over time. Uh, I don't have the names, I'm trying to make it look that quickly, but it had about four different names. But when 911 came in, to make it easier for the ambulances and whatever, they named this road Coolidge Drive as well. And the extension of the number, this is number 95, and then it jumped over to across the street, and that became number 107, and then 109, and then on the other side here, they had the even number. And that was mainly so 
if there was a, you know, an emergency, they know where to go. Now, back about three years ago, the assessor and our uh, emergency coordinator for the town said, you know, we should really name this something other than Coolidge Drive because it's not Coolidge Drive. So, the name of the road, our private drive, okay, will be considered in the future as Coolidge Way. Their mailing address where their mailboxes are here because this is a tiny, tiny little road. Now, some people have said that we've maintained it, that it's a town road. <laughs> you can see how wide this road is, this one. I mean, you can, that's barely big enough for an oil truck to get in. That was not turned over to the town, has never been a town road, and based on the way that's there, it'll never be. Because when you get in there, there's no way you can turn around. There's, it's just, it's a one way. You're back it's into common drive, driveway. you know. Common drive? Is that what it's a common drive. What did I say it was? Private road? It's common drive. Okay, common drive, officially. So the intent of this here now is to name this as Coolidge Way. The mailboxes are there, okay, and will be considered, so their mailing address will remain the same, and hopefully, so they don't have to go through any expense of changing checkbooks, whatever, and as property sell, ask them to change it to the Coolidge Way. How does that get done officially, Will? We adopt the resolution. Oh, I, okay, I know we're gonna adopt that resolution, but you know, in the future, when they sell those properties, how does that get done? How does what get done? In the future, when these properties sell, yeah. right now there's, they have on their deed 106 Coolidge Drive. Okay. Well, the deed has a, usually has a deed description and a tax map number. It doesn't necessarily always have the address. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact of the matter is, if this is a, you're, you're actually creating an official map of the town, and for E911 purposes, designating this common driveway as a uh, with a name, and it's called Coolidge Way, so that it can be found by emergency services. That's the, that's the sole purpose for it. Okay, well the sole purpose originally was Coolidge Drive, but that doesn't match. Again, truly. that was that was something done arbitrarily by yep. someone along the way. It was never done by this town board. Uh, back in the 90s when E911 came into effect, um, there was a, a major effort by, I believe Lois Hutel was the supervisor at the time, was a major effort to to name all uh, all uh, roadways that had I think uh, two or more houses that it, that uh, accessed off of it were given names so that they could be identified for emergency purposes. For some reason, this road, whether it was, whether it was identified as as Coolidge Drive or what, I don't know. But it was never a town road, so it should have, had, it, it should have been given a separate designation, whether you call it Coolidge Way or Lake Way or, mm -hmm. or some other name uh, it is really immaterial. It's just that it needs to be done and established permanently. Okay, I'm just trying to see here. Okay, in the past it's been referred to as Coolidge Drive, Coolidge Parkway, Tenetta Lakeway, Lakeway, and Lower Road. That's all the different names that it's had over the years. So it's now going to be, hopefully, considered to be Coolidge Way. I mean, my only concern is what you mentioned is added, you know, expense to homeowners changing everything. They don't, they will not have to. But if they won't have to do that, that's fine. They don't have to do that. Yeah. And but there would be a public hearing and they would obviously get to weigh in. Right? Is that, is there a, is this required is there a public hearing? hearing for that? Or no? um, I, I think we've had public hearings in the past, um, but the, the one of the one of the concerns here, and, and to be totally candid, is that there are people that buy homes on these streets uh, on these streets and say, well, it's called Coolidge Drive, so it must be a town road, right. and it never was a town road, <coughs> never has been a town road, it's never been maintained by the town. So by by formalizing the the, the difference in the name, it, it certainly puts everybody on notice that this is a common driveway. It is not a town road. We're not going to maintain it. So. Are you going to request, do we, is there a need for a public hearing? Um, let me just go back, back and look at my records. Okay. But um, uh, I, I think that it, it, it may not be a bad thing to do. Yeah, I, I think it's road. a good idea. If yeah. I wouldn't want your, you wouldn't want your road name changed without 
being able to weigh in on it. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, everyone that lives in that area right there is not probably going to want to have it done, and they're the only ones that are going to come forward. So well, you can expect right. all right. no's, and we're going to have to make right. a determination. Okay. But I think forward. if they're but. know that there's not an expense required with or time consuming with change. Well, they, there is an expense required because they've been maintaining it for years upon years upon years. And they're still going to have to do it. So that's right. no, I think we're right. doing no, no, I'm not as far as the expense of changing your checkbooks and right. stuff no, like no. that. Right. But no, I mean, you, you can Voter continue to have your, your, your address as 106 Coolidge Drive because the, the mailboxes, which is really what the addresses are, <coughs> are on Coolidge Drive. Right. Okay. Okay. okay, and this is just a close up of where it is. Again, there it is, and that's the little Coolidge yep. way, and it's 102, 6, 8, 10, 9, and 7. Yep. So these people are responsible for paying themselves. To they've been, the they've road. been, they've been like that forever. So no, nothing is going to right. change other than identify it, and it's more for emergency purposes because it's not necessarily Coolidge Drive, right. and there is confusion because again, Coolidge Drive is it a town road right. identified with a, a green sign mm -hmm. with white lettering, and a private drive is to be yeah, a so. white background with green lettering. That's what this would be labeled as. Okay. Okay. There's a question. Is there someone, just come up to the mic if you would, please. Uh, Christine Vicini, I have absolutely no sway in this at all, and I'm just confused. So that means that if someone, sa someone says, okay, my address is, because that's what's on their checkbook and has been their address, whatever the number is, Coolidge Drive, and I, I write it down, and then I go home, and I want to Google search it and I put it in, eventually, that, that house won't show up when I do a Google search because that address doesn't have a house attached to it. It has a mailbox well, it's attached a mailing, to it. There's a mailing address and there's a physical address. Their physical address will be Coolidge, Coolidge Way, and their mailing address will remain the same as Coolidge Drive. And you anticipate that people will use, use both of them? I'm, I'm just... Trying to understand how, how the it, what the actuality the of it, what the actual implications of the change sort of is, because it's a change that you're proposing. Because when people buy, but not really. Okay, when people buy a home, right? They, they look up Coolidge Drive is a town road. Right now, temporarily, what we've done, we put an asterisk next to these these numbers. Because when they call for a title search or whatever, they say I'm 102 Coolidge Drive. And someone goes down quickly, Coolidge Drive is a town road. However, we've now update, updated our thing. There's an asterisk there. That is not a town road. And a lot of people want to live on a town road. They don't want to live on a private road. I understand that. Okay. I understand all those aspects of it. I, I just see it as kind of confusing. Only in the and beginning, I, as time goes on, 25 years from now, it's Coolidge Way. They can change their mailbox if they want as well. They can the next property owner can make that change. Well, see, they, it's they won't much be able easier to change the non mailbox non because <coughs> right. the postal service will not they're go not down. Okay. They're not going to go down. Yeah. Right. But the mailbox doesn't, the mailbox, perhaps that's a postal regulation. Does the mailbox need to be on the road In this that, case, the, yes. that, the, that, the, that the mailbox serves? That's it not how I want to ask the question. A, it needs to be on a publicly maintained road. road. But it doesn't have to have as its address that road. It represents a house. It is not, the mailbox doesn't have an address. The mailbox is the vessel to receive the mail for an address that exists somewhere, but that's the mailbox for. I'm just speaking to the confusion in this day and age of having, in essence, Two different addresses for the same property. They can probably that the a physical, lot. Yeah. the physical address of where the house is, and then the address that's associated with the mailbox sitting on the road, which is just a vessel. There are, right. There are people in Patterson that have Bruce addresses, but they live in the town of Patterson. On the other side of town, we have people with Carmel addresses. Uh, that was it. But but that's the town. That's that's not the specific house. That's all I'm talking about. The specific house address will. Will in actuality be is the word bifurcated because they have the house address and they have the mailbox address. I don't think it's that uncommon with, um, especially because we there's have post, a lot office, of, post office post uh, office addresses or, or, or. I mean, we have a lot of private roads that um, where the mailbox sits on 
312 say, but they probably use, you know, it's up to the is owner. Is 312 they, their address then for their mail? I don't, I don't think necessarily it is. I think that people go by whatever, kind that, of what they I want. I guess I think that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I when you're on 312 true. and you make a, a left onto yeah. 312, and you go just before the reservoir, there's a development, mm -hmm. not a development, but the house is up on the right-hand side. All the ma mailboxes right. are along 312. I believe right. they're a 312 address that for the mailbox, but they live up on top of that hill, and I don't know what that's called. It does have a name, mm -hmm. and there are other places. I think it kind so of you, up So you're them. saying the opposite of what Lynn, Lynn just said. No, I think it varies. Yeah. I think people, uh, it's for 911, so 911 right. is the priority here. Right. How, how the people handle it is more up to them how they if they want to change their checks and have it coolidge way they can do that and i'm quite sure that the mail will get delivered there i'm just i mean to kind of the piggyback on what you said so let's say my you know uh, phone bill comes from my residential phone and it's addressed to the coolidge, coolidge drive way. right but i you know so if you call 911 and it comes up on the Green, will it say Coolidge Drive or will it say Coolidge Way? And would the arriving emergency services be confused then? I don't know. I, I, right. I, and I know in Putnam Lake, there are, I know some people live there, they, it's kind of confusing there. There's people that have a house that actually has two mailing, like two different street addresses, because I guess the houses were you know, built when it was the summer, summer bungalows, but um, they actually have two different street names for the same house, you know, two different addresses or whatever. So I'm just I'm know. just talking about my immediate. Right. I mean, I, I know nothing about this prior to this hearing it just tonight that what it sounded like was a plan to um, refine and and make clear something that to me just muddied the waters a lot. I, I understand if you change everything to Coolidge Way, I understand that that means that people who still use checks would have to change their name on their checkbook and they'd have to notify um, their credit card company that their new address is thus and such uh, as if they were moving but it, but, it, but it's a single a action it's, it's not uncommon but I know I'm we also have streets that. like um, State Line Road off of um, Milltown it's a town street, but then there's a sign at some point it becomes a private street. I think those houses just continue on. I don't think there's any, you know, the street name doesn't change. It's just, and so, actually the mailboxes, I know if you go to the end of state line there, because the post office truck doesn't come, go past there. So let's go to the other, uh, the other reason now that we're looking at it is if you're, if you, if you're Coolidge Drive and it's a town road, that is not a town road. So that's, why that has to get changed it's not a town road it's i have stopped. no problem with you changing it I, I think changing it is perfectly fine i i'm questioning there will be confusion in the beginning i'm i'm, I'm questioning why do something that creates confusion instead of making a clean change kind of and and no, and no, what i heard is the reason well we can ask we can ask the post office what they would decide yeah. because they're going to be the ultimate one because they deliver to that number the numbers are not changing only drive right to weigh on those five, six parcels and three houses. All I was sharing was that it, mm -hmm. that it seemed very confusing when it seemed to be something that was planned to make things simple and precise for emergency services. That's all. It will be. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, what I'll, so we want to have a public hearing. I'm going to Set yeah. Public hearing, but yeah, but for the meeting after the next one, second. the second and the sixteenth will be the next one. The sixteenth, because we won't be able yep. to get the paper for the public same. hearing. Yeah. I'll put that on the agenda tonight. Okay. Next thing is renaming Fortune Ridge Street name Valley View Lane to Stable View Lane. Now, there's not going to be any confusion yeah, here because there's no the houses way. there yet. Is that correct? Um, what it is, I believe the county has requested, since there are other similar names in town, that they don't want any confusion what's going on there. So Fortune Ridge will change from Valley View Lane to Stable View Lane because they have a view of the stable. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. But there are others. You want to come up to the mic and just, just let us know? But if there's nobody there, there's no way. There's no one there, yeah. yeah. Although these no yes. no um, just just for clarification purposes, 
Uh, and the most important thing is there are no homes on this. This is a, this is a, a road where in the future we hope to have homes. Uh, so quite frankly, it's just to clear up uh, what might possibly be some 911 confusion because of similar names. Uh, Lori Bell, Ken Clare, uh, Chris Bunch and I met, um, discussed the issue, um, and clearly we just want to clear this up because we have to clear up our internal documents, uh, title work and that type of thing. And, um, and this is something that I believe uh, not only Ms. Bell, but uh, Mr. Clare have agreed, which is fine with them. And I would just respectfully request, you don't need a public hearing because okay. I'm the only person that will show up. I'm just going to tell you the same thing. So. <laughs> no, but the other ones, again, no one wants a, change, no. a name change. Right. There is a name. <coughs> yeah, but, we're, it, obviously, but when 911 first went in, that's when they should have done it right then and there, and it didn't happen. They decided <coughs> to name that road something other than what it really was and give it numbers mm. back in 911 days. Right. There are really a lot of names. Well, like I, that. I'm just going to leave it leave it alone because we okay. this uh, I, I there there might have let's just say there might have been uh, there's a saying we use sometimes in, in the practice of law 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 office failure. This was not law office failure. This is just an administrative vacuum yeah. that for whatever reason um, and predates Kenny Clare. So when when you did that subdivision, Rick, um, was there not a name a, a road name assigned to that particular? Yes. And that's the name we're changing. And it's because it's because it, it is too closely uh, similar to other roads in the town of Southeast, or not no. not town of Southeast. In Putnam County, the county they're they're getting, they're generated this request. Okay. The request came from the county. It wasn't from us. It wasn't from uh, well, anyone. Well, when you start looking at road names, though, with the town of yeah. Southeast, like we have a Maple Road, we got Maple right. Drives. Yeah. You can, I know there's other towns that have yeah. the same thing. So I, this right. is kind of strange, but they requested it. It is it's a simple thing to do, yeah. and we're going to do it. Yeah. Thank you. It's because originally it overlooked a valley because it was open <laughs> space, and now it overlooks oh. a stable. Oh. Am I right or am no. I right? No. Well, there's, 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 there's a little stable, right? but there's still... There's still 110 acres, uh, uh, three, 210 acres of open space. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this is a no-brainer. I mean, yeah. there's nobody there, so okay. that's fine. They'll be on the next agenda, Rick. But it's yeah. true. <laughs> okay, <coughs> make a motion to go into regular meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> okay, let me just get myself squared away here. This is nice. Okay. We have the reading of the correspondence. Two, approval of the voucher list, one million forty-eight four forty-eight thousand four hundred twenty-three point ninety-three. So moved. I'll second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Setting of the meeting dates and public hearings. All meetings will be held at 1360 Route 22, Bristol, New York, at 7 p.m. unless otherwise noted. Thursday, February 2nd, 2017. We will also set tonight a public hearing for recreation definition and set the public hearing for minor subdivision definition. And Thursday, February 16, 2017, and also set a public hearing for uh, Coolidge Way. So moved. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Budget transfers, because at the time of the year uh, going from 2016 to 17, there are none this, to report this time. Number five is a motion to award the 2017 Lawn Maintenance Service Contract to La Teja. Edwin, help me on this. How would you say that? Teja. Teja, Construction and Landscaping. And that's the company that has it now. Right? That currently yeah, has it now. The, the services went up a little bit, but they still came yep. in as the lowest bidder. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is a resolution filing, filling the unexpired term to 1231 to the planning board. Now therefore it be resolved that the town board and town of Southeast hereby appoints Eric Larka, L-A-R-C-A, who has been duly recommended and deemed qualified to fill an unexpired term on the Southeast planning board to expire December 31, 2021, and be further resolved that the appointment shall take effect immediately upon taking and filing the appropriate oath of office, the aforesaid appointee with the clerk of the town of Southeast. So moved for discussion. I'll second. Discussion. 
Um, All in favor? Can yep. I just say, I would like to say that um, we really had some terrific applicants, which was um, is a wonderful thing. So I'd like to thank all the applicants, and um, now we can vote. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Number seven, it's a resolution to declare lead ag agency to amend the re recreation definition. Now, therefore, be resolved that the pursuant to 617.6B1 of the State Environmental Review Act, the Town Board of the Town of Southeast hereby declares itself lead agency for the purpose of seeker for this type one action. So move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number <coughs> eight. It's a motion to declare a negative declaration on seeker to amend recreation definition. Second. So, discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next is a motion to, for the referral to the Southeast Planning Board to amend the recreation definition. So moved. I'll second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Number 11, resolution declare lead agency to amend minor subdivision definition. Now therefore be resolved that pursuant to 617.6B1 of the State Environmental Quality Review Act, the Town Board of the Town of Southeast hereby declares itself lead agency for the purpose of seeker for the unlisted action. So moved. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 12. It's a motion to declare negative deck on seeker to amend minor subdivision definition. So moved. Well, second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 13. A motion. GML referral to Putnam County amend minor subdivision definition. So moved. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 14 is a motion of referral to the Southeast Planning Board, amend minor subdivision definition. So moved. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 15 financial report. Um, there's really nothing to report. We're into the first month. Everything looks really good so far. <laughs> so. Huh? It just started. The I know. That's why it's really good. Uh, hopefully we'll get the books completely finished by sometime in February to see how we ended up the year. And by probably by May, I have some anything of substance to report on the budget. Other than that, I have nothing else. Public comment. Former legislator, Mr. Gross, welcome back to public life. Good evening. I'm unemployed, but I'm here, <laughs> not here for a job. Uh, last evening, the Chamber of Commerce met, and um, I wanted to thank uh, Councilman Alvarez and uh, Tom LaPerch of the Planning Board were there, and they gave an overview of the projects that are now going forward <coughs> and some things that are planned, and it was very informative, and I can speak for all the attendees and say it was really much appreciated. So thanks, Edwin. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, on another matter, I, I noticed in the snowstorms we've had, brine is being used on the roads, the, the white trails along the highways. And I was wondering if any review was done on the acidity of that stuff. It's deadly to automobiles. It rusts cars out. It's very bad. And I'm wondering about the water table and about the, the swamps as this stuff washes away with the rain, um, you know, how toxic it really is. That was my concern. Well, the toxicity has been the same for many, many years because with salt, as you know, they were putting down salt and sand mix, sometimes with just salt. Um, I don't know if it's any more potent uh, mixed. I, I don't know that, but it's an acceptable practice by the DEC, DEP, New York State. So I, get, I would imagine someone looked into it and it has to meet the same standard was there before. I don't think they'd allow something that would be worse. The Automobile Association of America is against it. <laughs> well, for people that have nice cars, of course. That's why when we buy our trucks, um, you know, on a list from down Virginia, whatever, we buy them because there's absolutely no rust on them. They may be like three, four, five years old, 
and they're like brand spanking new we buy them. So we're buying a lot of our vehicles mm. down in Virginia at these days. I, I've, I was uh, informed that Brian's pretty bad for automobiles. It rusts out frames and all. You I know, know the highway department, I've seen some of the back of these trucks. Oh. The salt is just eating them out. I'm sure you've seen it as well. I'm, I just wanted to bring it up as a concern because this is, the sec I think, the second year we've seen that. It hasn't been around. We used to use sand and... And other items. Well, they still well, do. I don't, yeah. like, Brime is, is a preventer, and it supposedly works better. I don't know how it works that it's better, yeah. but it seems to work better. And you notice I don't drive my car in the winter? I think what it does is it, if it's pre-coated pre the roads, it prevents it from Build up and all. building up yeah. quicker than, you know, depending on how much snow it is. But that's the idea. But you are right, though. It is bad for cars. Um, um, <laughs> That's why they do recommend you frequently wash your cars during right. the winter and yeah. stuff. But, uh, this thought I'd mention it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much. If you buy a new car, don't drive it home from Florida. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Any other public comment? Town board members? Um, I would just like to say we met um, this morning, uh, Bob and I, with uh, Victoria to go over the website. And um, I won't bore you with all the statistics, but I thought it was really Good news, they, we, we seem to be, as they say, in the Goldilocks zone, and we're doing well. Um, we've gotten almost 28,000 hits since May, um, but um, Bob might want to speak to, I think, part of this as far as um, we really would like to increase, um, well, we want people to rely on it, um, and we do have uh, some thoughts about that, but I think you want to talk about sign-ups and things, or... Right, now just, it's, we only have right now 64 people, I believe, that have signed up on our website to get news and announcements. Um, we'd like to be able to put stuff out more uh, quicker um, if there's some sort of emergency or road closure, but there's only 64 people getting it. It's, you know, kind of, uh, you know, it's not really getting the word out. So if anyone's watching this at home, it's very easy. You go to our website, you just, um, Type in your email address, and uh, you'll be submitted uh, automatically to getting any uh, news and announcements. We are talking about maybe we have to speak to Tony. I'm not sure the expense, but um, the company that we use for the website does actually have an app that you can download from uh, Google or, um, I guess, I iTunes, uh, which would be free, but the time <coughs> would have an expense. But it would also allow quicker access to uh, the website and also would allow you to get a automatic uh, like news alert if we put something out so it's something we'll think about um. it's also um, I found because I get a, I like getting uh, agendas just through right. the website and so you really can pick and choose it's great right. so you can get just the planning right. board agenda or just this and um, or all of them so it's um I think that part's really user right. friendly and if you live in a special district uh, mm -hmm. they're broken down uh, we did put an email out about um, what district was it? Seven Oaks, I believe. They were having um, water interruption, mm -hmm. which never happened, but I guess they were supposed to happen. Um, that way you can find out if there's going to be uh, some sort of issue with your water system uh, beforehand. Yeah, we, especially anyone with a, uh, in a special district should really yes. sign yeah. up for this. Yeah. And right. again, as bad as 64 sounds, when we had New York Alert, it's five times greater now than it was then. Yeah. Right. So, so we'll, we'll keep working on it. And, um, right. And the biggest hit of our town uh, website pages is the recreation department, followed by the uh, receiver of taxes, and then I believe the assessor's office, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no, then there was one ahead of rec, and I can't remember what that Isn't was, it? but yeah, there was one. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but so that's what most people are interested on, and we are looking into maybe seeing if we can um, expand our website. So, uh, like for recreation programs, you could actually register your children or whoever for uh, a program online and actually submit credit card information uh, automatically, which would, uh, now currently you can't do it. So um, we do take credit cards, but you have to either call in the number or go uh, to the uh, recreation department for them to swipe your card. So uh, it's a work in progress. Yes, and I, was, I think it's really impressive that the departments are really, um, a lot of them are trying to work and make it as user friendly as possible, and I think they should all be commended for that. We have some work to do still, but um, I think it's gone really well since it's really only a little over six months old. Okay. Anyone else? I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to close tonight's meeting. <clears throat> we second. No, I'll second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for coming.